<coughs> so three modes of inheritance uh, we will discuss okay so in this chapter so whatever the new concepts we come across for the so the entire con entire concepts in this full chapter is present in this diagram only okay so we have to understand this uh, concept that is three modes of inheritance okay okay before i go to this uh, diagram and the explanation see so we'll take this uh, sentence whatever i have written uh, after the diagram that is when a class inherits another the members of the base class becomes the members of derived class <clears throat> okay, first let me try to understand that okay see we know that whenever we write a class okay so whenever we write class for example class name if i write like a a is the class name so whatever may be the class name so whenever we write the class we know that we have three things three things in the sense like uh, private okay so private then comes the uh, protected okay sorry private public and protected. three access specifiers we have okay so these three we can consider like access specifier and as well as we can consider like section okay that means part part of a class okay so we have three parts in a class that is private section or private part public section and protected section okay now if we consider like this and in each section for example in private section that is in private access specifier we can write the data and functions both we can write or we can say data or functions any one you can write okay or we can say data or functions you can include both or any one <coughs> okay. data or functions similarly in case of uh, public section so we can write that is data or functions similarly in protected section also we can write the data or functions because whenever i whenever i say class okay so class is nothing but which includes which have two main parts that is data and functions and those data and functions we should include in either one of these sections that is private public and protected okay so class in, includes two things data and functions or we can say data or functions if you want to write both you can write it or else any one okay you can write okay so when you write uh, any one or both data or functions or data and functions you should include either in the private section or in the public section or in the protected section if suppose if we don't write like either private or public or protected then by default it will be included in private section of the class okay by default it will considered as private section okay next <clears throat> next thing is inheritance means like we need one more class okay for any for an inheritance we need at least two classes in a program okay now let me take it as class b okay so when you say class b so class b will be the derived class see listen here class a will be the base class okay i said two classes are required right? class a is called as base class or we can consider like parent class out of these two classes class a becomes the base class and class b becomes the uh, sorry class a becomes the base or parent class and class b becomes the <coughs> uh what what we call as like derived class or child class okay we can call it as like this or subclass many terms are there so if we want to understand about inheritance minimum two classes are required out of those things one will be the private class sorry one will be the base class another one will be the derived class or you can call parent class or uh, and another one you can call it as a child class minimum two classes are required see maximum means again we can write two or more classes that is called as multi-level multiple hierarchical so that we will see okay but now let us consider two classes class a and 
class B. Okay. So <clears throat> when when we consider like class A and class B, class B will be the derived. The meaning of derived means from existing one, we are getting new thing. That is called derived. Not only in computer science, in in any subject, physics, chemistry, mathematics, we have derivations. Derivations meaning already some things are present. Okay, from that only we are getting a new thing. So whenever we are getting new thing from an existing one, then that is called as derivation, derived thing. Okay, similarly here also we are creating class B. We are creating class B from class A only. That means we are getting the properties of class A and we are creating the class B. Okay, so this process is called as inheritance. See whenever we consider the inheritance. Okay, see how many types of inheritance we can consider means. That is <clears throat> these types. Okay, so we have discussed in the previous class single level, so uh, single level inheritance, multi level, multiple, hierarchical, and hybrid. So these types of inheritance we can consider. Okay, now let us consider the first level, single level inheritance. Okay, in single level inheritance, what happens? And when I explain about single level inheritance. Some of the concepts, what I tell for single level inheritance, it can be applied for all. That means when we look at this diagram. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, see, look here. When I say class B is inherited by class A, the that in the next thing what we have to tell is, see, you just look at this. Sorry. You just look at this uh, statement. See, when a class inherits another, this is very important point. You have to remember when a class inherits another, that means here class A inherits class B, or we can say class B is inherited by class A. That means class B is derived from class A. We got the class B from class A. What happens? The members of base class becomes the members of derived class. See, when we write the class concept in a class, if you consider a data and functions both, or if you consider only one thing, data, or if you consider functions, data and functions, or data or functions, whatever you consider, whole together, or any of those things will be called as members, members of a class. Understood? See, we consider data of a class. This is also called member of a class, members of a class. Or if we consider functions of a class, okay, functions of a class. So this is also called as member of a class, okay. Uh, then if we consider both, like if I say data and functions both, okay, if we consider both also, this is also called members of a class, okay. This is the term used in a class. Either you consider data or functions or both data and functions. All together, these are called as members of a class. Okay. Now, in a class A, we have the members of a class that are put into either private section or public section or protected section. Okay. Now, if class B is derived from class A, the thing is, if a class B is derived from class A, if a class B is derived from class A, the members of base class becomes the members of derived class. This point to remember first thing. The members of base class becomes the members of derived class. The meaning of that is, if suppose, if I write in this class, if I write, if I write for example, uh, let me consider <clears throat> like uh, in A, this is one data, right? This is one data, in A is one data, okay? And that is the member of the class A. Understood? A is the data that is a member of the class A. When class B is inherited by class A, what happens? You know, the members of base class becomes the members of derived class. That means this A data, okay, this A data uh, will come into the B data. Sorry, B class. Okay, from A it will come to the B, and there is a rule for uh, sorry there, there are some uh, restrictions i will tell you restrictions in the sense whether uh, a will come to the class b or not i will tell you 
but according to this sentence you try to understand the members of base class becomes the members of derived class that means even though if we don't write int a in uh, class b automatically this data a will come to data sorry data a from class a will come to class b that is called as inheritance inheritance means acquiring the properties of another class one class acquiring the properties of another class here class a is parent class or base class class b is child class or derived class what i am telling is if class b is the child class it will acquire the properties of parent class okay if i say class b is inherited by class a then that means it acquires the properties of <coughs> class a what property either it can be data or it can be functions or both properties is nothing but members members of a class either it can be data or it can be only functions or it can be both data and now let us consider a a is the data this a will come into the class b even though we don't right it will automatically come. that is the concept of inheritance okay internally it happens for a user you cannot notice but internally while executing the program it happens okay i don't write any program that means in class b i will not write int a but automatically this data will come into class b okay and next question is whether 100% this data will come or not because there are some restrictions that restrictions are nothing but just listen carefully the restrictions are nothing but whether you are inheriting class b in private or public or protected mode when we are when we inherit class okay if one class is inherited by another class if one class is derived of another class then while inheriting we have to mention this mode okay that is private public protected understood we have to mention the mode then only we can say whether the members of the class will come into the another class members of base class whether it will come into the class b or not okay because inheritance concept itself is acquiring the properties of one class here class b will acquire the properties of class a okay if that is the case i have to mention the mode private mode public mode protected mode so class b can be inherited either in private mode or in public mode or in protected mode then if that is the case if i inherit in private mode what happens if i inherit in public mode what happens if i inherit in protected mode what happens so this diagram it will tell what is that you just look at this diagram this diagram will tell say i have taken two classes here base class and derived class okay and derived class means it is it acquires the properties of base class okay derived class acquires the properties of base class in all the three cases okay when it acquires the properties of base class first we should see um, uh, that is properties of base class are nothing but members of a base class properties of a class are nothing but members of a class either it can be data or a functions or both data and functions and when you consider data only data or a function or both data and function that will be put in either one of these sections you just look at the sections what i have written private section public section protected section in both derived base and derived have written so private section public section or protected section okay you can put the data only data or only function or both data and function either in the private section or in the public section or in the protected section just try to understand here see little bit more theory is there but if you correctly understand this entire diagram perfectly this chapter will not become difficult at all it becomes very very easy and i will give guarantee for you so uh, members of a class means it can be put in either private section or public section or protected section okay when derived class inherits the properties of base class see just like uh, example i have given in the previous classes like uh, food to fruit apple i hope you people remember okay red apple acquires the properties of apple apple acquires the properties of fruit fruit acquires the properties of uh, food like that you can know. or you can say father mother son or father mother daughter son will acquire the properties of father and mother like that you can understand okay now here derived class base class now if i inherit in private mode or in public mode or in protected mode the concepts are different here because when you inherit one general rule is 
members of the base class will come to the members of the derived class members of the base class will become the members of the derived class that is that is one common concept members of the base class becomes the members of the derived class that is one common concept and are there any restrictions for that next question is are there any restrictions because we have three sections in base class and three sections in derived class definitely there should be restriction okay we cannot say like in all the three modes it is same okay or we don't required mode at all mode means these are the modes private mode public mode or protected mode that is called visibility private mode public mode or protected mode if 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 it is not required to write private mode or public mode or protected mode then there will be no restrictions all we can say all the members of base class will become the uh, members of the derived class but there is a restriction if you in if you in it in private mode what happens if you in it in public mode what happens if you in it in protected mode what happens now we will see look at the first thing okay in if you inherit in private mode okay if you inherit in private mode public members of the base class will become the private members of the base class protected members of the base class will become the private members of the base class okay first uh, first thing is one uh, general rule what you have to remember is this sentence that is the members of the base class will become the members of the derived class you just remember this point the members of the base class becomes the members of the derived class okay next when you consider the members of the base class you have to put a question on yourself that is whether it is a private member or a public member or a protected member whether it is a private member or a public member or a protected member next again when you consider the members of the derived class whether it comes in private section or public section or protected section same thing is same uh, this thing is applied access specifier if you consider the members of the base class you have to uh, consider like whether it is a private member or a protected member or public member and if you consider the members of the derived class uh, whether it will become the, uh, mem uh, the what <clears throat> members of private section or public section or protected section like that you have to consider now if you inherit in private mode public members of the base class will become the private members of the derived class protected members of the base class will become the private members of the derived class see in simple words i will tell you when you inherit in private mode public and protected members of the base class will become the private members of the base derived class when you inherit in private mode public and protected members of the base class will become the private members of the derived class that is the concept next see first section i have not written anything i have not put arrow mark here if you observe all the three categories all the three modes of inheritance first section that is private section in all the three modes of inheritance I have not put arrow mark that means that private members cannot be inherited this is applied for all this one sentence you, you can take it as granted private members cannot be inherited so you should not put arrow mark from base class private section to derived class section okay you should not put arrow mark the meaning of that is private members cannot be inherited in all the three cases whether you whether you consider private mode public mode or protected mode in all the three cases it is not inherited only how to consider about public mode and protected mode okay so if you consider the first mode of inheritance that is private mode of inheritance both becomes private you just look at this arrow mark will understand both becomes private next when you consider the public mode of inheritance if derived class is inherited by base class by considering the, considering the public mode of inheritance then public members will become the public members protected members will become the protected members that means we can say no change whatever the status they are considering in base class same status is maintained here we just observe here there is no change in the status public will become the public protected will become the protected so that is when you inherit in public mode okay when comes to the last thing if you inherit in protected mode what happens if you inherit in protected mode public members will become the protected members protected members will also become the protected members that means status will change here in case of base class uh, the members which are in public section their status will change to protected section in case of derived class and for protected members there is no change in the status it becomes the protected members see in simple uh, way i will uh, try uh, for you people to make understand that is how to remember this diagram how you can remember is 
if you consider private mode both becomes private you just observe public and protected both becomes private if you consider protected mode both becomes protected you look at the armor fill control both becomes protected okay when you consider public there is no change whatever the public section you are considered in base class same in the derived for protected same so again i will tell you if you consider private mode both becomes private if you consider protected mode both becomes protected if you consider public mode there is no change in the status okay uh, coming to the first section of the base class it is not inherited at all whether it is private mode or public mode or protected mode it is not inherited at all okay now just go through this diagram if you come across any doubts you can ask i will wait for a minute so afterwards i will continue okay we want to can take the screenshot also okay. includes inheritance whenever you, whenever you come across okay so first mode of inheritance is private mode in private mode both there is public members and protected members both becomes private in case of private mode both becomes private in case of protected mode both becomes protected in case of protected mode both becomes protected in case of public mode there will be no change in the status public will remain as public protected will remain as protected so in this way we can remember this diagram okay now we'll move for the next topic okay okay <clears throat> so next topic is that is a uh, base class access control okay see here the word access is very very important the meaning of access is Uh, to take control over to get the permission access meaning to get the permission see for example see when you uh, when you go to your friend's home okay or relative's home if you want to touch any object okay so you need permission like uh, it's a general way we can think like we cannot go into the kitchen room or room and if you want anything you can take directly you should not do like that so that's that's the ethics we can say so that means we need some permission there okay similarly here also when we consider the data of the class or a function of a class is inherited by another class then there also we need the permission okay so that permission is nothing but the access access so only we say access control okay base class access control okay so when we write another class okay that is a derived class how we can write because till now uh, what we have discussed in classes and objects chapter we used to write only one class okay and if you write uh, two classes also there we were not linking for, uh, between one class and another class so in class and objects if you write two classes so it is not wrong but there will not link so when we link two classes means that is the concept of inheritance so if you want to link two or more classes means what general format or syntax we have to follow that we should see so this is the general format okay if you want to link two or more classes okay so what is that class class is a keyword okay then derived class name okay so derived class name so it is called a child class or sub class okay derived class name so that is nothing but identifier so how to remember the identifier rules and write that derived class name class is a keyword so you can write as it is write in lower case letters that is small letters it is a keyword derived class name it is an identifier remember the identifier rules blank space should not be there starting character should not be digit symbols except underscore is not allowed then keyword should not be used in uh, so you have to remember the identifier rules and then write the derived class name immediately after derived class name you have to put the colon symbol okay so you have to put the colon symbol okay then access specifier so access specifier means it, it can be either private or public or protected okay either private or public or protected so compulsory how to mention because you look at the diagram whenever you inherit you, you should mention the mode here whether you are inheriting in private mode or public mode or protected mode that mode is nothing but access specifier here those access specifiers are nothing but again keywords here okay keywords means again you are writing small letters that is lower case letters then write the base class name okay so base class name means it is identifier see before you write the derived class you have already written base class that class name you should use here okay so class is a keyword derived class name is an identifier that is you are writing a new class name after that you have to put the colon symbol see by mistake if you put 
two times colon symbol okay it becomes scope resolution operator don't do that okay if you put two times as colon symbol it becomes the scope resolution operator okay so you have to put only one colon symbol then write the access specifier either private or public or protected then mention the base class name okay then whatever you want to include in the derived class it is called as body of the class you can write anything here data functions whatever you want to do okay now we will see explanation of this so what are the things present here okay hmm. see here the explanations are given here the base class name and derived class name should be a valid identifier as i said you have to use correct identifier by following the rules of identifier you have to use the identifier okay the access status of base class members inside the derived class is determined by the access specifier access status means the meaning of access status is if you look at this diagram uh, when you inherit when one class inherits the other uh, how you have to consider that is nothing but access status whether uh, uh, what happens to public members of base class what happens to protected members of the base class like that that is nothing but access status so how it is determined the mode what you write that is determined by the mode private public and protected so that is nothing so you just look at this sentence the access status of base class members inside the derived class is determined by the access specifier okay so access specifier whether you are writing private or public or protected by that way it is determined okay see clearly they have mentioned here, base class access specifier must be public protected or sorry public private or protected okay if no access specifier is present the access specifier is private by default okay if you don't mention any access specifier it is private by default but generally we will not do that okay we have we will mention one access specifier because uh, according to syntax we we should write if you write according to syntax it will be no confusion so generally we will not do it but if you come across any programs where access specifier is not present then it is private by default okay when an access specifier for a base class is public okay all the public members of the base class becomes the public members of the derived class see this sentence you can understand by diagram also when an access specifier for a base class is public all public members of the base class becomes the public members of the derived class that is nothing but this diagram second uh, box you will see right that is in the diagram second one so in public mode if you inherit public members will become the public members public members of base class will become the public members of the derived class you just look at this diagram will come to know. public members of the base class will become the public members of the derived class that only they are telling when an access specifier for a base class is public all the public members of the base class becomes the public members of the derived class in all cases the base private elements remain private to the base and are not accessible by members of the derived class the meaning of this sentence is it's very simple private data members of base class cannot be taken into derived class that is the meaning not accessible means it cannot be taken into derived class okay for example uh, as illustrated in the following program objects of type derived can directly access to the access the public members of the base class okay 